What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video today. We are doing the Jacksonville Jaguars. So yesterday we posted the Indianapolis Colts vid, um, a team I'm really high on. And now we are going to the exact opposite polar extreme with the Jacksonville Jaguars, which I am extremely low on this year. Um, I'm not, wait, what game did they beat somebody in? It says they're one in 10. Oh, they beat the Chargers. Yeah, they're fully rested. They should probably beat the Chargers even though Chargers are far better than them on paper. But this is an interesting team because ever since Nick, I mean, not Nick Foles, ever since Blake Bortles, it's weird kind of saying this, um, they have just been complete dumpster fire materials. So uh, Blake Bortles definitely wasn't the reason for it, but obviously it shows that quarterback is a huge part of that team. So let's look at the team. Starting off quarterback, we have Gardner Minshew. Um, Minshew Magic, he is, he's hard to get a gauge on because he is far better than what the haters think he is, but he is far worse than what the lovers think he is. So he's a very polarizing prospect. I think he's kind of in the middle. He's pretty much like, he's, he's pretty much a backup to me. Like he deserves, he deserves a shot at being a starter. He didn't do too horribly last year, but at the same time, it's like, uh, like, he, he's not, like, number 32 in the league type territory. I really don't believe in him that much. But if he ends up turning out, Jacksonville saves themselves having to go out and get another quarterback, and boom, like, you can use that first-round pick, second-round pick, third-round pick on someone else. So, lots of good things here in Jacksonville, potentially. Um, looking at the running back, Leonard Fournette, possibly? So there's news that Leonard Fournette might be being traded because he bitched at Tom Coughlin. So that's kind of hard to gauge where that's going to be. But at the same time, it's like, eh, whatever. Um, Leonard Fournette had a pretty damn good season last year. Uh, he actually had like 70-something receptions. So that's kind of something I didn't expect from Leonard Fournette. But if he gets traded, it's not like... Jacksonville is going to lose a ton of wins because unfortunately the war wins above replacement for Leonard Fournette is not going to be high simply by the fact that the rest of the team just isn't comparable anymore. This team used to be Super Bowl contending type team, one quarterback away from Super Bowl contention, and they've pretty much fallen off that bandwagon. Regardless, um, the let's look at the rest of the team wide receiver. You got DJ Chark. You have uh, Tyler Johnson, fifth round. I think that's an amazing pick. You still have D.D. Westbrook, um, pretty solid out of Oklahoma. They have a couple other weapons there as well, but those are just the general weapons that um, Jacksonville has. And at tight end, I can't really think of who they have because, I don't know, it's just it's not popping to, into my head right now, but still... Nobody's super memorable on this team. I know they had ASJ uh, a couple years ago, but I don't think Austin Safarian Jenkins is still on the team. And even if he is, he hasn't done anything. So Jacksonville has a lot of weapons that they can work with, but at the same time, it's not really contention worthy. Looking at the line, they have Brandon and Linder, solid offensive lineman. Uh, Norwell used to be an amazing offensive lineman, all pro type. Uh, kind of fell off a cliff there. They have um, they have just have a couple pieces there. They drafted a player um, who I'm blanking on, Florida Gator, in the second round last year, who was arguably the best tackle in the class. So I mean, they have they have pieces there. It just it wasn't working together last year. So that's kind of kind of weird, kind of scary because on paper they should be a lot better than they are, but they just really they really aren't doing it. But Still, um, on the defensive side, defensive line, you got some weapons there. Uh, you got Taven Bryan. You have, uh, you still have like Yannick Ngakwe, and I mean they just they got rid of Dante Fowler to the um, to the Rams. So I mean that was a good deal for the Rams. Dante Fowler has been quite productive there. Um, they just got Caleb on Chase on as well. So. They have, they have pieces, and they have some very young pieces that are developing. But, I mean, they're still trying to shop away some of their some of their assets right now. 
At linebacker, they have Miles Jack, who I thought that was a brilliant pick when they took him, and it's turned out to be a great pick. Miles Jack is a beast. And then Talvin Smith's getting older, man. Like, he's like 30, 32, and you just start going off a cliff, especially with how he's more of a coverage type. It's kind of hard to maintain that type of ability when you're starting to slow down. So that's not very good for him. Um, <clears throat> I don't really, again, I'm, I'm blanking on other linebackers right now because I, oh, they did just get Schobert. They did just get Schobert, sent him to a big deal, which I think they overpaid for him, but I I don't know why, like, they're acting like they're both tanking and in win-now mode. I would not have given Joe Schobert that type of contract. So, whatever. Um, corners, they used to have the most lethal secondary in the NFL, hands down, uh, AJ Boye and Jalen Ramsey. Which, again, I thought Jalen Ramsey's pick, I was like, oh, there's no way he fell that far. But he did. Um, it's okay. You know, CJ Henderson's there. That's the key thing. He will be. He was my second guy in the draft. I had him mid to late first. And um, he was. I said, he, I'd be perfectly, perfectly fine if Jacksonville took him at 10. Perfectly fine with that. And they did. So cheers to them because that was a great pick for the type of value that they received from it. But apart from that, they're not really cooking with Crisco in that secondary. Uh, Ronnie Harrison's still back there from Alabama. And really, that's like they're not working with some all-star talent back there. So this team has bright spots. They have young talent on that team, but they're very raw this year and they need to continue developing. So week one, Indy's going into Jacksonville. You have a bunch of raw talent. They're not going to be developed at that time. And Indy is a far superior team. Look at the Indianapolis vid if uh, you guys want to check out my reasoning on that. The next week, Jacksonville goes into Tennessee, and Tennessee's going to win this one, guys. It's pretty obvious. Um, Tennessee's a very, very comparable team, uh, very challenger-worthy. It's just it's all dependent on Derrick Henry's health, which in this series is 100% healthy no matter what. It's pretty much like Madden turning all injuries off. So... Derrick Henry will be uh, fully healthy, and I think the Tennessee Titans will want to use him and continue to franchise tag him until he's burnt into the ground, which is unfortunate because Derrick Henry is a great talent. Uh, the next week, Miami goes into Jacksonville. I'm giving this one to Jacksonville. Miami's been getting quite a few games here, but I think that Miami outside of Miami is far less of a contender than Miami inside of Miami. Home field advantage is huge for Miami. And Jacksonville is a little bit north of Miami, so I think it's an even playing field. And Miami is definitely up and coming. On, In my opinion, arguably the best secondary in the NFL right now. It's insane how, they quickly, tur- how quickly they turned. But they have a lot of pieces that they still got to work on. They're really young, really talented, but they have a lot of pieces that need to be fixed, especially that offensive line. And Jacksonville's bright spot is their pass rush and D-line. So I'm going to give that to Jacksonville. The next week, Jacksonville goes into Cincy. Um, Cincy is a far superior team. Their offensive line is probably their worst asset, but it's still not horrible. Like, obviously their defense isn't great, but to be honest, I don't believe in Minshew. I don't think he's going to take that big of an advantage of it. Um, And then Will Jackson's still here. So I think Will Jackson might have two picks this game. Just... Gordon Minshew is kind of a gunslinger, but not in the right way. More of the way too aggressive type and not good enough. That's why he has magic. Because he, the times that he doesn't fuck up, it looks great. But the problem is he fucks up a lot. So we'll see what happens with Minshew magic here. The next week, Jacksonville goes into Houston. We're giving this one to Houston. Houston is a far superior team in general, but at the same time, um, you just got to worry about uh, how... Like, losing D-Hop is going to do to, like, the team's morale and stuff. It's just not a very good uh, organization there right now. I think that um, Keon brought this up to me yesterday. If they sign Antonio Brown, this could be a totally flipped video. Like, Antonio Brown could be that secret weapon that they need. They have deep threats. Brandon Cooks and Will Fuller. They do. They have Kiki QT, who's kind of a good route runner. But if they got somebody who is Hall of Fame route running worthy... You could have three all-star players on your team, pretty much. Like, like Pro Bowl-type receivers. 
Uh, Will Fuller, if he stays healthy, which in the series he does, is a complete monster. Super big threat. And then Brandon Cooks, we've seen him. He's, he's a damn good wide receiver. He's just not D-hop. Um, if you add Antonio Brown, Houston could be winning 10, 12 games. It's, like, it's that big of a jump. So, um, yeah, Houston, they're just, it's just a bad organization right now. There's not that much youth there anymore. They lost all their draft picks. And it's really unfortunate. They just signed a tackle to $22 million a year. I'm like, uh, okay, good one, buddy. So, really fucked up situation. I hope Deshaun Watson requests a trade soon. Uh, next week, Detroit fully rested goes into Jacksonville and wins. Um, this is going to be a close game. Very close game, but the extra rest, extra preparation will deal with the attrition of going to Jacksonville in the middle of autumn. By week, and then LA Chargers at home gets fully rested Jacksonville. Um, LA is far better on paper, but uh, Jacksonville is going to have that extra rest, that extra preparation, and LA is not that hostile of an environment for um, a team that's used to really muggy environments. So it's going to be actually a lot easier for them to go out of the muggy environment into a much cleaner, less thick air. Next week, Houston fully rested goes into Jacksonville. I'm giving this one to Houston again. I think the passing attack is going to be key this game. Um, Will Fuller and Brandon Cooks are going to have pretty big games just because the safety core for uh, Jacksonville is not top-notch. I I think they got... Um, Quinnen Williams' brother in the, the second round or third round last year, he obviously isn't it, and they do, they still just have voids in that secondary. But they're still developing, still developing. The next week, Jacksonville goes into Green Bay. There's no need to explain that. Green Bay is, yeah. You, you guys know the drill. Like, Green Bay's not good, yeah. Uh, next week, Pitt goes into Jacksonville. Pittsburgh is so much more superior. I'm going to clump these two together. Much better uh, wide receiver cores than DB cores. Uh, for Cleveland, a much better run attack than Jacksonville. And overall, better offensive lines than Jacksonville, even though we lost Ramon Foster. So, even with the vacancy at left guard, uh, it's still going to be like a cakewalk for Pittsburgh. Um, the next week, Jacksonville goes into Minnesota. In Minnesota, like their pass rush is probably their bright spot if Everson Griffin returns to his form and Daniil Hunter's a monster so it's in their secondary is not bad at all Xavier Rose is taking a huge step back but they still have Mike Hughes in there and they just got Jeff Gladney so really solid picks man really solid picks I know they picked up a second corner I forgot who but um really solid so this is gonna be a cakewalk as well Kirk Cousins is gonna have a fun time picking apart this defense the next week, Tennessee goes into Jacksonville. I'm calling upset here. I think Jacksonville's going to steal one. And it's unfortunate because because of this, they are. I do not believe that they are the worst team. Uh, they are not. It looks like the Chargers have a pick before them. Um, I think this upset is going to ruin their chances of getting Trevor, but they're going to get the superior quarterback in Justin Fields most likely. Um, yeah, I think that this is just going to be an upset type game. Tennessee's going to go in, and then um, I think the run stuffing might work pretty well this game. And Tennessee, their defense has weakened a lot. We'll talk about them in the next video probably. Um, still tossing up the idea of whether I want to do Houston or Tennessee next. But still, uh, I think Jacksonville has the potential to get wins here. They're really young. Uh, down the stretch, they're going to be more used to it. They're going to get in their rhythm. And I think they're going to steal one here. The next week, Jacksonville goes to Baltimore. Guys, do I need to explain this? High-powered offense, really good defense in Baltimore. No more questions asked. Uh, the next week, Chicago goes to Jacksonville. Even though it's a really shitty environment for Chicago to be in, super damn good defense. People just forget the fact that they're the best defense in the NFL like two years ago. Uh, Nick Foles at the helm is going to game manage very well, and the entire wide receiver core is pretty baller. Arguably the most deep wide receiver core in the NFL. Lastly, Jacksonville goes to Indy. Um, Indy is a far superior team all around, and they're at home. They're going to steal the win and go into the playoffs at 11-5. And, and the number two seed currently in the NFC, which I believe they will remain that since we have uh, the North and the West completely solidified, they are going to be number two. 
So let me know what you guys think. Uh, this I want to say I gave them a better record than I thought I would. I thought they were going to go uh, 1 and 15. But, I mean, obviously, there's games here. Like, this is a logical one. Uh, it could be a victory for either side. And then here, it's kind of an upset, but they're fully rested in extra prep. And then here, this is just an upset. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on the far side. Peace.